Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Well, I might be a little late to the party, but it doesn't make it any less heartwarming. And if you are with the sound, within the sound of my voice, you must be in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I am the host of this podcast where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of industry professionals and pick their brain about uh, state of the industry, current projects, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and conversational fashion. And if you like how we do things around here, I'm assuming you do. You're listening to us right now. You can subscribe to the podcast. We would love that. You can find us over at Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google. It's all good. And plus, you can find every single one of our episodes archived over at our In the Seats YouTube channel. So if you can give us a like and subscribe there, that would be fantastic. Uh, Also, you can follow us on the social media, as the kids call it. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at either at In the Seats or at It's Podcast One for all sorts of updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, I say it a lot, but it's true, uh, please visit us over at In the Seats, intheseats.ca for all the latest from the world of film, television, news, reviews, basically the moving image at large, because that's what we love to talk about and write about it, and we love it when you come and read about it, so please stop on by on this episode we got a fun one we actually got a bit of a double header because we're talking about uh the paw patrol movie and guess what it's it's a lot of fun it's so fun it's 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 the story of Ryder and the pups and as they're called into an adventure to adventure city to stop mayor humdinger from turning the metropolis into a state of chaos and it's 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 very kid centric, but it's it's not to the point that it's going to make adults roll their eyes or anything like that. It's actually a lot of fun, and it's really well done with some great action and just a really a great story overall that you know anybody can enjoy, quite frankly. And we had the distinct pleasure of not only talking with uh, co-writer and director Cal Bruckner about sort of the making of the film. But we had the distinct pleasure of talking with uh, young star Lily Bartman, who is the voice of one of the adorable pups. And uh, we had great talks with both. So uh, I hope you enjoy them. And go check out the Paw Patrol movie in theaters or uh, when it comes uh, near you on VOD or DVD or Blu-ray or what have you. But it's uh, it's fun for the whole family. But uh, enjoy our talks and go check out the film. Obviously, first off, Cal, thank you for the time today, man. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. No, I mean, congratulations on the movie, man. I mean, I'll be honest, I dug it. And I, mean, I wasn't expecting to, but I mean, because I mean, I knew of the TV show and it was a little syrupy sweet and the whole thing. But when it got onto the big screen, it felt kind of epic. Like, can you walk me through, I guess, bringing the small screen to the big screen, being involved in this project? I have to say, thanks. That's exactly the uh, exactly the reaction we we're hoping for is to, to hopefully surprise people. Um, give those younger fans what they expected, but hopefully have uh, hopefully have enough in there for an older audience that they can really have a full family experience at at the movie. Um, so in terms of in terms of taking it from the small screen to the big screen, a few of the things right up front that we wanted to do was to try and make a giant action movie for kids. They don't really exist for a younger audience, and we thought with these rescue dogs, we could have these huge epic rescues and, uh, you know, fireworks and fire and crazy storms and underwater and all this stuff um, at a theatrical level. And that would be a reason to really go to the theater and, and see this as something new. And then secondly, we really wanted to tell an emotional story with themes that resonated and, and mattered. Because if you're gonna ask people to go to the movies for, you know, just under an hour and a half in in the case of this movie, you have to, there has to be enough story and reason to to watch this movie to stay engaged that long. And so we really focused on trying to tell an emotional story. And in this case, it's about one of the characters trying to figure out how to deal with fear and, and, uh, and what it really means to be a hero. Well, and that's what I loved about it, because I mean, even the action sequences excel themselves, which look fantastic, they all felt like they had emotional stakes. And I mean, in animated movies, when there's these big colorful action sequences, we don't always get stakes, but here it felt like there was stakes and there was scale. How important was that for you to sort of give something where it actually felt like the dogs might be in a little bit of danger as they're doing all this stuff? 
for for me, that's always number one is what's the story reason for this to be there? Because I think the truth is with movies, you know, we've seen it all now, right? Right. Yeah. Massive, massive uh, epics at the movie theater. And I think they end up feeling kind of cold to us unless we're connected to the characters through these moments. So that was always number one through all of the sequences, all of the set pieces. They started from what does the character need to go through? And then how do we make this spectacular, not the other way around? Now, I mean, something else that I really enjoyed was just, I mean, basically the earnestness of it all. Like it all felt 100% owned. They were earning it. They were committed to everything. Like how important, like how do you sort of translate that small screen sort of energy to a big screen like that because i mean it's again like you can look be on the outside looking in and think it's a cartoon it's a little silly but when you get into the meat of the story it's like no everyone's committed and fully owning everything that's going on i grew up loving um really kind of unsarcastic movies you know grew right. up on spielberg and and there was there wasn't a lot of winking at the camera and kind of making fun of itself. And there's a lot of that in animated movies these days. And that's great. It's just not my aesthetic. I really, I, I love to jump in with both feet and, and, you know, every character thinks they're the star of their own story and to try and be true to what they would do and, and to try and give them difficult obstacles to overcome um, and do that all without Kind of getting lost in pop culture references or sarcastic stuff or whatever i i prefer to just for me the magic trick of a movie is if you can forget you're watching a movie for a little bit if you can achieve that that's that's success and i think if you're kind of winking at the audience all the time saying yeah we're making fun of ourselves then you never break that into that moment where people are truly swept away what do you think we lost that aesthetic for a while? Because, I mean, you're right, especially in animated films, it's almost gotten a little out of control with the sly wink and the nod to the camera, but it's not always necessary. That's, I, I mean, I would agree with you. I know a lot of uh, a lot of other people might not feel the same way. I think it's sometimes people are are feel that the only reason these movies should exist is to just shove in as many jokes as you possibly can. Right. And I, I love a good joke. But I think it's it's always got to serve the story. We've cut more jokes than there are in the movie. And there are lots of jokes in the movie, but everyone has to earn its place. If it takes you out of the movie or disconnects you from a character, it's got to go. That's that's our philosophy, at least. It's not everyone. No, no, and I agree with you. And I mean, I think that goes, I think that works well with the action as well, because it was scary, but it wasn't like sort of too scary. How do you sort of walk that line of creating something that feels big, but not, sort of overwhelmingly so so that's a great question that was the tightrope we walked for two and a half years on this movie um our first we were obviously we wanted to push and make sure that it was as exciting as it could be but once we had stuff to look at we got it in front of kids pretty quickly and we were surprised that even the youngest kids are watching stuff with their older siblings that's pretty intense you know we're hearing lots of young kids who are seeing marvel movies and stuff right, like right. well if you're watching that we're definitely okay in in uh the level of intensity of this movie but we 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 watched kids watching it and we saw where they tensed up and we and, and we kind of calibrated to that and also sound and music is a big part of that if we felt that um you know it we'd been intense for too long you got to kind of let the release valve out a little bit, have a break in the the volume of the music or the the intensity of the score or whatever. Now, this is a silly question, but it's something I always like to ask. Think back to your younger days. Was there like a movie moment in your life that was sort of the pivot point that made you want to get into this business? I, for me, the movie that always sticks out is Goonies. As a kid um, watching that, I don't know that I thought about movies at the time. I I didn't really put together that people made these things, I kind of just was swept away with them. But I remember um, being so affected by that film and being so kind of excited about the adventure and kind of playing it out over and over. And and I think that the kind of magic of that and the memories that those kind of nostalgic connections to movies have, I think that's what I'm after now. And that's what chasing a career in movies has been about for me is trying 
hopefully make movies that are that for somebody else. And you know what? I love that you say that because I think I see a little bit of Goonies in this with these characters who are existing in their one world, but then trying to sort of evolve into the next I'll, one. I'll take it. And I'll it's a fun it. ride, man. And just, you know, thank you for the time today and uh, congrats again on the film. Thanks so much, David. Really appreciate it. Now, I mean, obviously, first off, congratulations on the movie. Like, I really got a kick out of it. It's so much fun. Now, I, I mean, I guess my first question is, like, just tell me how you, you got the part on Paw Patrol and how it all evolved from there. For sure. So I, in season six, I auditioned for Sky, and I was so excited when I got the audition because obviously Paw Patrol is so popular, and I worked really hard for it. I watched multiple episodes of Paw Patrol, and, you know, it was a few callbacks later and I got the news that I got the part. I was so excited. Like it, it's a dream role for sure. Fantastic. Now, I mean, in watching a bit of the show and then now watching the movie, it feels like the movie's a little bit different. Like was the whole process of making the movie a little bit different for you compared to the TV show? Yes, for sure. I, uh, I had to change my voice a little bit as well because obviously it's a movie. So it's, it's a little bit more, you know, cinematic. So I had to, you know, push the heroic side of Sky. <laughs> How is it when uh, when you're doing stuff like that, when you're trying to, like, because, I mean, obviously you started in one end, but now you're sort of having to adjust along the way. Is it an easy thing or is it hard or? Well, I mean, over the years of doing voiceover, I've kind of developed and I think I've, you know, I've gotten to a point where I am able to do this and I'm able to kind of switch it on the spot, which I'm very happy with. Um, but definitely at the beginning, it, it was very hard to do that. <laughs> do, do you have any preference of like sort of working in a booth versus working on a set? It's so hard to say. They're so different, like totally, totally, totally different things. <laughs> but, but I mean, I mean, really like it's, it's, I mean, I guess from my perspective, it's like you get to, you get to go into the booth with, in your sweatpants if you have, if you, if you want to, right. As opposed to being all dressed up. And like for COVID, I, I've been actually doing it from home. So it's so convenient. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so perfect. When uh, when you're doing something like this, and I mean, it's a, it's a big movie and, and I mean, it's got a positive message and I'm kind of curious, like when, when you're sort of in the moment, like, are you kind of aware of sort of how big the story is that you're telling and sort of the message that you're putting across to kids? Because... I was so struck between the differences between the movie and the show. The show felt very much more for kids, whereas mm -hmm. the movie felt like it's trying to be for everybody. Yeah, for sure. And I love that about that. Um, I think I knew like the, I knew how big it was going to be. And I know that it already has such a fan base. So I think I was like, I was obviously so excited. And I like, I knew that I had to change my voice and, you know for the big screen it's totally different so <laughs> have you had a chance to see it yet even on a big screen even yes i i got a cut of it a long time ago and then i saw it on the big screen a few days ago it was incredible excellent <laughs> now i guess for you going forward how do you like do you want to do more movies or are you happy doing tv sort of like what's the ultimate goal for you going forward as you you know go out for more auditions and get more jobs and that kind of thing I think the ultimate goal is just to be able to continue continue what I'm doing and, you know, book more parts um, and anything like everything is so much fun to me, which is amazing. You know, TV shows, movies, film and TV. I'd, I'd love to keep on doing it all. Now, I'm curious for you, like, like what was there a movie or a show that made you want to do get into the business and sort of be an actor like what was what was it it was actually watching my sister in theater productions that kind of you know made me want to be an actor and I saw her and I was like this is cool <laughs> so I auditioned for a few theater shows and I got the parts and I kind of went on from there and I developed my craft is there, a, is there a sort of a bucket list, wish list of sort of things you'd like to do, either be it on stage or the kind of movie that you'd like to do? I mean, voiceover wise, I think it's, I love doing like cool character voices. Like when I get auditions like that, I'm like, so fun. I, I really want this part. And anything like film and TV that pushes, pushes my comfort zone and, you know, I just love auditions like that because it's so not me. And that's kind of the point of acting, doing stuff that's totally, totally not me. <laughs>
For sure. And I mean, if you if you had to sell Paw Patrol to sort of audiences out there, how would you sort of describe it? Because, I mean, even when I watched it for the first time, I was surprised and I was, I mean, it's my job to have words and I was kind of without words because it really caught me off guard how much fun it was. Mm-hmm. So if I were to describe Paw Patrol the movie to anyone, <laughs> yeah. I would say that the pups and Ryder, they go to Adventure City where Mayor Hamdinger's elected pres- um, mayor. <laughs> and, you know, he brings these crazy ideas that put citizens in danger. So the Paw Patrol are ready to help. And they meet a new pup named Liberty who joins the crew, which is very exciting. When you're doing these voiceover jobs, do you get any opportunities to improvise and sort of add lines? Or is it very much just about the, the words on the page? Well, sometimes, especially in the show, I get to play like citizens and crowd and, you know, stuff like that, which is super fun because it's just totally do whatever voice and right. do, say whatever you want to say, which is super fun. It's definitely different. <laughs> For anybody maybe your age who who wants to get into the business and start working, like, do you have any advice for them? I think just being fearless and, you know, not afraid of rejection because there will be a whole bunch of no's before you get a yes. Yeah, it's the old saying, right? Yeah. 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 Just know that all those no's are leading up to a yes and it'll just make it that much more exciting for you. Well, if, if you could, will there be a Paw Patrol the movie too? I mean, I hope so. I think it would be awesome. It's a great movie, so I'm hoping so. Well, you know what, Lily? That's it for me. But thank you so much for the time today. And congratulations again on the film. It was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. Okay, thank you so much. All righty. Bye, Lily. Bye. And don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental, or purchasing needs this summer, as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs.